Thank you very much. We're celebrating our culture here, rich culture, and uh, I've got uh, what we call the on my on my neck. It's uh, actually provided by Ni Nicola Shali, the first the Kanishi Mancha. So uh, throughout you will see that throughout this day you'll see uh, ladies also come up. Uh, it's a depiction of royalty and uh, the garland, as we call it, like what the Indians will wear, is ornamental and it has a uh, spiritual protection as well. So good morning to you and don't be surprised. Um, this is not what we wear every day but as Africans it's one of the things we should be wearing nearly every day. The Daily Guide this morning says of some powerful trial witness stands by statement accident cars bill passed Auditor General's auditor coming and GES gets 858 vehicles. Beautiful Becky clocks 69. Yesterday was the first lady's birthday. The Catholic standard, be accountable, transparent with church money. Priests have been told by the Catholic Church, advocate for women, inclusion in politics. Gender equality essential for national development. Oye later, government supports silencing the guns campaign. And President Kufuado describes Archbishop Sapon, great man of God, on his 50th Episcopal anniversary. The Finder newspaper, 365 vehicles, 493 motorbikes for education directorates to enhance effective monitoring and supervision. Northern region chiefs laud government innovative uh, initiatives and government to distribute 12 million LED bulbs worth 200 million Ghana cities nationwide. ADB to offer more support to agribusiness entrepreneurs, according to the managing director. The Ghanaian Times cancelled a giant photo of my very uh, good big brother, Mr. Kwesi Ajiman, CEO of Ghana Tourism Authority. He says, stop spreading COVID-19 fake news. That's the Ghana Tourism Authority. And a lot of myths are, have been out there suggesting a lot of things that, for example, if you drink up with tissue, uh, it, will, it will solve your, your problem. So it, because we are blacks, um, we're immune to it. So stop spreading those fake news and coronavirus care no handshake in parliament speaker orders mps parliament passes customs amendment bill and to prohibit salvage specific vehicles over 10 years fuel prices likely to go down next week we've been told uh, by some 15 percent as Tampoli has indicated uh, sometime earlier this week doctor uh, daily graphic endangering human lives it comes with a photo a very very dangerous photo and i'm sure this is a, a very regular spectacle you find every now and then bread that we're supposed to be consuming in the boot of a vehicle bread that we're supposed to be eating for breakfast your children may be eating them you may be eating them from your favorite joints and this is what it is and the truck ahead of that bread taxi as i like to call it this morning is also uh, tilting towards the right, falling off literally. And accident vehicle imports banned. President Parliament amends Custom Act 2015. Volta Regional Spotlight launches tomorrow in Ho with exciting stories and captivating pictures. Book your copies. And uh, Ghana confirms first cases of COVID-19. Stop press. That's how the graphic posted yesterday after hot issues where we discussed uh, the COVID-19 issues. Then the news hit us. My guest this morning is lawyer Abraham Amalba. He is uh, lead counsel for the MDC. He is also a member of the communication team. And Nana Kofi Opong Damwa, he speaks for the Energy Ministry. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning Corona, to you. Corona, Corona. Good morning, good morning. You look very much this morning like uh, a Gawulomo. Yes, I'm a Ga priest. I'm trying yes, I'm trying to, to mix both. So the chiefs wear this as well, the garland I mean. Okay. And um, they also wear it sometimes. It's graceful, uh, as I said, it's ornamental and it ha also has spiritual connotations, some protective uh, powers. That's so, a colourful display of our culture. Thank you. Thank you very much. Later we'll serve you what we put in the, in the color bash, yes. Later, later we'll but say. I don't Nana, you, you, which one do you like, the white one or the brown one? You know, we put Wh a Which ones are those? Say again, the palm wine, there's brukutu, there's asana, there's medang. You choose the, you choose option A. Who talk? <laughs> <laughs> Nana, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, by the grace of God. Um, it's, it's, it's a beautiful morning, unfortunately. We don't have the, be uh, the best of news mm. in this country today, but um we're on top of it mm. and and it is well 
Okay. That is well. I have a certain um, faith that mm. I would only declare positive things. Okay. And so, uh, on the morning where we are being told that we had two cases of COVID-19, mm. mm -hmm. uh, my faith is strong that we will go over this one. It's also exciting to note that we already have plans, a lot of plans in place, mm -hmm. and funding, you know, has been promised. So. Mm. I believe that every Ghanaian should have that confidence that everything is going to go well. It okay, well. thank you very much. Ghana confirms first cases of COVID-19. Ghana has confirmed its first cases of the COVID coronavirus COVID-19. The reported cases from two persons from Turkey and Norway uh, were announced by the Minister of Health, Mr. Kwekwajima Menu, yesterday. He said the confirmation of the cases were made by the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, supported by the Minister for Information, Mr. Kujo um, and also Dr. Bedu Sakode yesterday as I watched them. He says that they too are being kept presently in an isolation center while processes have been initiated to trace any contacts they might have had with people, adding that the patients were in, uh, in stable condition. He reiterated the government's effort to ensure the situation was contained, saying, I wish all uh, Ghanaians that the, uh, the government of Ghana, together with all the health partners, will continue to work assiduously to ensure the sanitation situation is contained. He asked that we take care of our health, wash your hands regularly, uh, use hand sanitizers, and uh, some contact numbers. That, and, and I'll give you the contact numbers now. 050-949-7700. Again, 050-949-7700. And 055-845-843. I beg your pardon. 055-843-9868. 055-843-9868. Those are the... Uh, immediate numbers that you, you need to call. I'll start with you, Kobe. So, the president, the day before yesterday, held a presser and announced that some hundred million had been voted to to help fight this implementation, and purchase of materials, expansion of infrastructure, and all of that. Then, the next day, uh, we, we were told that we have two cases in fact, the president in speaking said that our neighboring countries have all recorded it, so it was important that we do. Mind you, the WHO's initial advice to us was to up our game from 2 million to 35 million. Does this come to you as a surprise, knowing that we have been assured over and over and over again by our health authorities? Um, um I think it's unfortunate that this morning I've heard quite a number of conspiracy theories suggesting that um, how come it was just a day after the president voted 100 million mm -hmm. that we are hearing of cases of COVID-19 and mm -hmm. that it was mm -hmm. it was planned and all. I think it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. It's very very unfortunate. This is a situation where the. World Health Organization has declared this to be a global pandemic. Absolutely. Now, if you look at Italy, for example, um, they are now in total lockdown. Mm -hmm. And it's basically because their initial measures that, that was taken were not conclusive enough, if, if, I, if I can use that mm -hmm. word. In South Korea, the church that is alleged to have helped spread the disease, for example, um, mm -hmm. has come under a lot of attack that their initial responses were a bit too lax, and okay. that has that is what has led to all of these things getting mm -hmm. to that point. Yes, the World Health Organization may have said that it is 35 million that is needed, but we do not want to get to that point where later on you, we'll you get up and resources. say that, yeah. oh, not that we lack resources, but we'll get up and say perhaps at the beginning mm -hmm. we should have been a bit more right. forceful and forthright with the issue. So if it is 35 million that is needed, and the president says, listen, I I've instructed for 100 million mm. to be put on standby. It doesn't mean that all the money is going to go out at once. But at mm. least uh, you can never be 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 too sorry mm. on an issue like this. Mm. And it is, you know, better to assume the worst and make sure that we have enough of everything that right. we need right. than to wait and see that we. I mean, it would never happen. Mm. But if we are to get to the point of Italy. As Ghanaians, we'll turn around on government and say that they didn't take mm. the necessary steps among others. This is a global pandemic. Okay. Let nobody deceive himself. Yes, there are various statistics that are very, very encouraging. Mm. For example, if you watch that, I mean, globally, the, 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 the fatality rate is about 2%. Mm -hmm. 
globally. I've seen some indices that suggest that in some specific countries it's gotten to about 5% among others. I've also seen data that suggests strongly that a lot of the people that are passing away are not necessarily passing away from COVID-19 itself, but they're passing away as a result of a lot of pre-existing condition. All of these well, it is assuring, but it's not assuring enough. Well, what do you want to see, for example, uh, there's been talk about wash your hands uh, with soap and under running water, use hand sanitizers. And yesterday, I was scared when I hosted a gentleman from the Cambridge University. He's with the Department of Pathology, the Division of Virology, and uh, Sebastian Arthur. And we shook hands, and then I used the hand sanitizer. So after we shook hands, he used a UV light to identify the germs or whatever I may have picked up, you know, some green uh, shiny particles. And then I used the hand sanitizer and then we checked. So it wiped away large, large portion of it, but there was still a little left there. And he says that the best option is for us to wash our hands with soap and other running water and then use the sanitizer to complement it. Would you, for example, as Ghanaian, want to see at public places I went to the coconut grove, I saw hand sanitizers everywhere. Would you want to see that replicated in markets, churches, schools, everywhere? With this of provision? course. I mean, insofar as our logistics and our culture will allow, why not? Um, you can never be too prepared against this. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. Mm -hmm. Again, we're talking about human lives. In as much as, you know, the statistics, again, I need to repeat this to ensure that people do not get overly scared or necessarily scared. Mm -hmm. The statistics suggest strongly that this is not a disease that is fatal in itself. Mm -hmm. And this is not a disease that is a death sentence. So we must all be very mindful of that fact. Mm -hmm. But in as much as that is the case, nobody wants to contract the disease, the disease at this point. Right. We have also been told that it spreads at a very alarming rate. Right. And so scientists anything, don't know why it's spreading. Anything that can be done to ensure that we contain that disease, I'm all for it. Mm. I'm all for it. And I'm very much in tune with government's preparation towards this uh, pandemic mm. because I feel, and I'm, I'm in sync with it because the president says, listen, we need to attack this from the very beginning. Mm. Results from around the world tell us that in China, there are some theories that say that the Chinese did not initially want to accept the disease and go at it with all the, the force that they could. And that is what has led to it growing into a global pandemic. So as a country, I think that we should all rally behind the president and encourage these efforts that have come. The fact that the World Health Organization said 35 million will not be a reason that you and I will consider if we sit back and allow this thing to get to the proportions it can get to okay. if, 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 if we don't take these steps. The okay. president says, I'm putting in 100 million. If there's a need to even put in extra, he will. Okay, thank you. You can never put a value on human life. And That's we are not about to joke with the lives of the people of Ghana. That's he right. promised mm -hmm. when he took the oath of office that he's going to protect lives and property. Mm -hmm. That was his first call protect the lives and property of the people of Ghana. So if he has taken these steps, I think we should all support him. Uh, be, these beyond, conspiracies beyond, beyond, of... Beyond, you see, beyond the, the call to support the president, there's also the call to see whether or not we have that robust health system that will use the money. See, the countries that we're talking about, Italy and Norway and France and Germany and US and UK, we can't compare our health system with theirs. Fact. So... Is it the money or the system? What is it? Okay. Now, the debate of a system or the money, for me, is neither here nor there. Why? Because despite all the robustness of the systems mm -hmm. of this country, you see where they've gotten to. At least now in total shutdown, we have two cases, and we have a chance to actually mobilize ourselves and ensure that we fight this as a country. Mm -hmm. So my focus is that this morning, let's avoid this issue of was it already here and the pre oh no, I, I have heard those statements and i'm extremely disappointed by them are we saying that we we rather want to focus on such conspiracy theories mm. which to me is, is as absurd as it sounds but is that where we want to focus when we've already had two cases in this country or we want to mobilize ourselves as a nation and then ensure that we find out how to solve this problem of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to prioritize and prioritize properly. Okay, Amalwa, step in for me now. We have money, but is that enough? Let me say good morning to your viewers. 
is it important for us to be interested in transparency when it comes to the governance of this country or not? And I say it's important. And so those who are asking those questions, whether it was here before the president addressed the country or not, are asking legitimate questions. Are the questions needful at this time? They are needful in the sense that we we'll want to know why the government waited all this while before announcing. Now, we have not been told why and uh, when these um, uh, uh, people who came from Norway and Turkey arrived in the country. Okay. We've not been told. We, we don't know their nationalities either. I'm saying that we've not been told when those persons who arrived from Norway and Turkey, mm. uh, we've not been told when they arrived in this country. That's right. The question you want to find out is, why is it that when the health sector needed money, mm. there was some dragging of feet? By who? By the government. And then, later on Wednesday, the president came and pledged 100 million, mm. isn't it? Yes, 100 million. Then the following day... The equivalent of Ghana City's uh, 500 and something. Yeah, exactly. The following day, we heard that two people, Ghana has recorded uh, two, 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 two patients. Now, those who are asking those questions are beginning to find out was the president sincere when he was addressing this country. Mm -hmm. And I want to see my president look in the face of Ghanaians and be sincere to the people. So they are legitimate questions. Now, I thought that we're all told that if your neighbor's beard is on fire, you fetch water, put it close to you. This disease or this uh, pandemic was going round and going round and going round, came to the doorsteps of our country. Ivory Coast, Togo, Burkina Faso. If I ask you today, what is the state of preparedness of the citizens mm. in terms of public awareness of this disease, it's next to zero. Are you sure? Very much so. We know that we must not shake hands. We know that we must wash our hands, use hand sanitizers. We've been told that. You see, you speak as if Ghana is Accra. And because you have the privilege to sit on television, and you have a white man who came here yesterday and used a torchlight and showed you, you think that you know. It's actually a black man who, who okay. studied in, in exactly. Cambridge. Exactly. It's a Ghana man. A Ghana man, mm -hmm. fine. You have the privilege of meeting these people. Mm. So you become aware. Go back to the hinterlands and find out from them whether they are aware of anything called COVID-19 and how to protect themselves. That is the state of preparedness in which we find ourselves. Are you aware that even in the washing of hands, we have been told to wash hands, but in the washing of hands, you must wash your hands for at least a continuous period of three minutes. Yeah, the IPC method. Three minutes? <clears throat> right. How many of us wash our hands close to three minutes? Even if you are washing at all. That is the state of preparedness. And I'm saying that this government, the president has failed. Is it, is it just to pin the president to say he has failed? Is that, is that a point? Before I said the president failed, I give you specific indicators and said that by this time, our state of preparedness should have been very high because we knew that it was going around. Mm -hmm. uh, my big brother, you know, uh, 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 A.B. Fusin, would say that when Darius uh, 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 is going around the family, is looking for the landlord. We knew that it was going to come. So if, if it hadn't yet hit Ghana, we needed to ensure that public awareness was at its height. We failed in that regard. Today, as we speak, you are, your media, st your station, tell me, do you have a jingle on coronavirus? Yes, we do. Why? A homegrown jingle. We could play it for you. From who? From who? No, we did it ourselves. Ah. We compiled it ourselves. Kudos to you. 
I'm talking about a government that is supposed to protect lives of the people of this country. Okay, so what we did was that we spoke with Dr. Bedou Sarkodie, who is uh, the head of uh, public uh, health at the Ghana Health Service. So we interspersed what he said with some uh, graphics and art and we put it together. That is your outside. own initiative. I'm saying that this morning I'm not taking your station to the cleaners. I'm taking one individual and his government to the cleaners. And that individual is the one I am focusing on. He is the, I don't pay taxes to you. But you have gone your way to do what God and man wants. Can we say the same about our government, that they've done what God and man wants to the, to the people of this country? What do you want to see now? Now it's here. Look. Again, you are aware that South Africa, two days, three days ago, mm -hmm. sent a plane to bring its citizens back. We have been in this country and have been complaining. And the people, our students in China, have been crying out loud for them to be brought back to Ghana. This government and the president have refused to do so. The Chinese authorities, and in fact, uh, our own authorities, health officials say, it is not a wise thing to do because China has a more robust system to contain and take care of the students. That's uh, technical advice. Are we saying that you should go and bring the sick here? Is that the, the, the understanding? Is that the understanding of this government? That if people are going to board the plane, you will not use the gun to see whether to test them? Is that what they are saying? The president himself did not show leadership. When he returned from his travels, eh? he went to countries where nowhere is one of them where these countries recorded this disease. The Ghana Health Service indicated that people must self-quarantine if they return from those countries. Yeah, in the release, I think two weeks, three weeks ago. No, the the Ghana Health Service indicated when the president returned, he was rather going all around the places inspecting, inspecting facilities. He didn't show leadership. Look, this disease does not know whether you are present or not. We've seen vice, a vice president of a certain country who has, been con who has contracted a disease. The, this government simply, when it comes to issues relating to the citizenry, they do not think that the interest of the uh, citizen, citizens is, is paramount to them. Okay. Now that we have it here, now that we have it here. What should we do? What, what do you want to see? Wrap up, wrap I up. want a Marshall Plan quickly to be ruled out in the area of public education. This morning, they should roll it out this morning. It's, it's, it, it is an imperative. Look, this people just came from uh, Kutuka International Airport. How about the porous borders? You know the number of people who are by now crossing this country, eh, using paths? You know that, you know our borders. Mm. So when they get into contact with those people, where these health facilities are not available. It will spread like wildfire. You indicated here that the disease spreads like Hamatan wildfire. And so I want, for me, me, what is more, 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 more important for me is for them to roll out a master plan for public education, okay. massive one, like those days we could see um, ACE. Mm -hmm. huh? It was not a sing song about AIDS, you knew what it was. You could just see it on television. We have a plethora of media houses. They should flood them with how we can, you know, protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I've indicated to you that even if you thought that washing hands is one of the means, we are even told that the kind of the washing you must do <laughs> is an intensive one, four minutes. Mm -hmm. So we need education in that area. Okay. Then we also need, lastly, we also need to find out when those people came. Mm -hmm. We need the names of those people because I would have come into contact of, with that person, but I don't know, I've forgotten. So if they say, it is Mr. A, I say, ah, okay, I even met him. So let me do self-quarantine. The contact people. Exactly. And, and their nationalities as well. Their nationalities, they must mention their names. Probably I might come into contact with, I don't know. So that if that is done, anybody who comes in contact with them will say, yes, I met him. 
uh, at Accra Mall or something, I will do self quarantine. Okay. So they must do all these things. Okay. So the education here is that <clears throat> you must wash your hands thoroughly. And the IPC, I wish I had water here to teach you. So the first thing is that you wet your hands, okay, and then you start rubbing it. And then you may have to go this way, okay, and try and scrape it like that while you have soap in your hand. And then you go this way, and then you can go in between the fingers like that. And like that, you wash up to the, rib, uh, the wrist. So you wash like that. When you're done, you can, you can come back and do and scrape your hand in circular motion like that, okay? And then you can drain it. When you're done, you quickly have to wash the handle of the, the tap so that you don't recontaminate yourself if you have it already. And then you shut it. Once you shut it, if you're not too sure of the towel that's there, whether it's contaminated or not, don't use it. It's okay, it's also okay to allow the air to dry your hand or if there's a, a blower that has some heat, you can put your hands under it and do, and then you sanitize yourself. But as much as possible, um, wash your hands regularly under soap and running water. Running water is important, not in a bucket, not in a bowl, a bowl of jams. Wash your hands with soap and water, sanitize, and regularly so teach your children how to do this. It's here, and you must take care of yourself. Politicizing it, whatever it is, it will not help you. When you die, you die. Okay. The statement yeah. you've made cannot be true. Politicizing it cannot help any of us. When you die, you die. Now, you see, I have this morning listened to a very sustained effort at attacking the president mm -hmm. and seeking to cast all sorts of aspersions. But in the end, he answers the question that he himself seeks to raise by saying that we must do public education, right. a lot of public education. Mm -hmm. How do we do public education without money? So when the president, when the World Health Organization says use 35 million, and the president says we're going to go up to 100 million, it is because all of these things that you're talking about mm -hmm. are already part of the plan. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, when the announcement was being made, you saw a concerted effort between the Ministry of Health mm -hmm. and the Ministry of Information. That tells you that these two bodies are working together in a very sustained concerted effort. Mm -hmm to ensure that we do not only get the message out, which is his solution. Because mm. when you asked him, all he sought to say was, ensure that there is enough public education, there must be, you know, jingles and things mm. on all radio stations mm. and TV stations. That's one step. Mm. Information is good. But actually, we must also put in place measures to deal with the problem. It, if it does Public really education is key. I don't, I'm I, not I, challenging I, that at all. It's very, very key. I'm not challenging that, that at all. What I'm saying is that the very advice he's given, what he says should be the solution, mm -hmm. is already in play. You saw it yesterday. We have the Ministry of Information, the Ministry of Health coming together. Mm -hmm. In as much as we're giving information out and saying what has to be. And this morning, I have seen the jingles already being rolled out. I have just shared one of it on my Facebook timeline right in now. What, in what we released in one language because oh. we do know that there's, there was one in English and Dr. Norman uh, Ishmael Norman of ISTIS at a uh, public forum here called for for it to be localized. So and, in Mamprosini, and they've in, been uh, done. in P, in Ga, in Ebe, in it, so this is unfortunately this is what that this is in English because I mean my dad I well, speak a lot so, of English. So but I'm saying that, that but there as for are the English English jingle we've seen it we have it other media houses have. I'm it. not challenging but, what I'm telling but, you but is the that localization of the look, message. What I'm telling you is, is that for example at. on this your platform what you no. will have is the English version yeah. because this platform is noted for the English right. language and I'm saying that from today on your FM I believe is a local language. So, so what we did what we what we did for TV. We we sip the sound out and then we give it to three FM. So all and I'm saying is that we did a key translation for Nya Connect and Akuma FM. And all I'm saying is that that's good. But the public education that he seeks to say that we don't have it and all of that. I'm rebutting that. Are you satisfied? Look, 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 look,
better late than never. So let him stop. Okay. But my my, my question am, to you, Damwa, is that, look, public education is crucial. No problem with that. We all don't speak so English. Bad. And like Amaba said, many others have said it, Ghana is not a cry. Even, even the Ashanti region, even Takradi, I, I would want to see a lot more public education done. Don't you agree? See, you can never have enough of public education. That's a fact. You can never have enough of it, particularly mm. regarding the fact that this is a global pandemic. We're not dealing with some small disease in mm. its own corner. It's not declared a global pandemic. So but the, but we the need point, to look. The point is that, look, the, Dama, the, what you're showing me, sorry about that, but what you're showing me now, I've seen it. I've told you by our own efforts here and by other media houses. I'm saying that, for example, this one, beautiful. When are we getting a P version, a Ga version? A Dagbali version, an other version. I have seen a tree version of this, a Fanti version of it. I have seen it. And it is only because I speak tree, Fanti, and a bit of Ga. Okay. But I have seen it. All right? And I'm telling you that these things are in place okay. and they are going to be rolled up. Uh, oh, um, oh, oh, oh. Allow, oh, allow, oh. allow him. He, he, has, he, he has a few minutes and then you will come in. Please note your point of disagreement. Please. Now, you have said that there should be public education. And I'm telling you that, listen, it's, it's going on. Yes, we need to ramp it up. In those days when we used to have enough uh, information vans, okay. in a situation like this, we should have had information vans going all across the country, helping to propagate this. Inf this, this, this the ISD is still alive, is it not? The ISD is still alive. Unfortunately, they've not, they don't have enough. I'm aware of a lot of efforts being made to procure mm. these uh, information vans. I mean, modern versions of it to ensure that the rural folk in this country are taken care of. I'm even aware of, a, of, of, of some jingles that are being played on community radio stations in the Ashanti region. Mm. I was there from about a Friday to Sunday. Uh, from Thursday, sorry, to Sunday for the Independence Day celebration. Mm. And I heard some of the community radio stations around Kenton, Corona, among mm. others, mm. that were playing jingles about coronavirus and alerting people. Okay. There's a lot of private effort that has also gone into this. Right here at this junction, mm. I believe um, Afrikiko Junction, yeah. there is this LED uh, display mm. joint mm. that mm. I think they sell LEDs. They have even taken it upon themselves to be displaying information on how to help handle okay. coronavirus. So, 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 so the point is I'm trying to make to him mm. is that listen, let's not politicize this one. Two, public education is already ongoing. Yes, I believe that we need to ramp it up because we cannot... For, for example, careful. Rwanda, I saw a photo from uh, Rwanda where Paul Kagame has provided uh, some mobile hand washing uh, machines, self-regulated. Uh, you pump the water with your leg and you wash your hand. You know, guys, it's, it's made public. Now, I put out on Facebook, for example, wash your hands with soap and under running water. And Fred T. Mensah and uh, another Glorieta or we or somebody, they say, well, we don't have water flowing through our taps. And for me, that, that hits me. Would you want to see a similar thing like has been done in Rwanda down Question. here? Question, if we don't have water flowing through our taps, does that mean that we should sit down and let coronavirus come because we don't have water flowing through our taps? They have we, a legitimate concern, though. I'm they? not challenging the fact that they, they, their concern is legitimate or otherwise. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that under the existing circumstances, even if we do not have water flowing through our taps, mm -hmm. we need to take the necessary steps to ensure that under these conditions, we are still able to hold the disease and hold it in check. Great. And government is doing everything to ensure that this is done okay now this morning he's encouraging people to go out and question the president that why 100 billion and i'm saying fine you are going on the basis of transparency fine that's where you choose to focus i have no problem with that go ahead and do all the questions he said but more we, than transparency i'm not fine i'm not challenging any of that all i'm saying is that i think the focus should rather be on holding the disease okay thank you transparency listen the president has already come out there to say that this is how much we are spending. Mm -hmm. Of course, you don't expect that the president would, in one address mm -hmm. to the nation, explain all the modalities of everything that is being there. Mm -hmm. It is also up to people like me, when we sit on platforms like mm -hmm. this, to add more flesh to the bones that the president has. And I'm seeking to do that. Okay. He's not seeking, he's not trying to allow me, or he doesn't it, want to believe it. It's not it. about him. Don't make the conversation about him. Well, no, I'm no, saying, but you see, he said that he is attacking one person, the president and his government. Yes. Now, here's my point. If that's where your interest lies at this point in time, that's okay. That's where you choose to go, to attack the president and his government mm -hmm. at this point in time, ignoring the fact 
that we have a global pandemic on our hands mm. and we should all come together to ensure that we solve this problem for the people of Ghana who you want to vote for you. Okay. I, I, when, I, think, I, think, I think that you're, you're being unfair to Amalba because when you started the statement, the, the discussion, you quoted the constitution and said that the president's duty is to protect the people of Ghana, correct? Yes. Great. So upon what you raised, and you were asking for people to rally behind the president, he's also saying that the president has failed in that duty because of A, B, C, and D. So to simply put it that that is his focus, I don't think you're being fair well, to Well, but the point, the, he made, the point he made is that he is interested in attacking the president okay. and his government. I am saying that we have a pandemic on our hands. Right. And at this point in time, you choose to attack the president and his government. Because he thinks you have not done enough. Well, if you think that we have not done enough, I have told you what we have done. If you think it's not enough, that's okay. okay. But see, the issue he landed on mm. was public education. Mm. And I'm saying that the public education is ongoing. <clears throat> of course, with the allocation of these monies, you expect to see a ramp up. And the ramp up is happening from this morning. Okay, you see, when I said that, when Daria is going around the household, is looking for the landlord, I didn't just say it for the sake of it. I meant to say that if the landlord has not yet been attacked, mm. he should prepare himself to protect himself. If you are saying that there is public education now going on, I am saying that this should have been much earlier. That's the language I'm, I'm speaking. saying to you better late than never. I agree with you. Right. I agree with you. But as a citizen, paying my tax to a government, I will hold the government accountable for the lapses. Mm. Why the government did not put in place measures earlier on for me to know my rights or to know how to protect myself. I'll question that. But I know that uh, in the MPP, the president is a demigod. So you dare not talk about him. I don't see him that way. I see him as a servant. And being a servant, I would always draw his attention to wrongdoings. Nobody is saying that money has not been voted. Mm. We all heard him say the money has been voted. But I'm saying that accountability requires that he, as a president, should have taken the interests of this nation at heart and activated the processes long before now. So that mm. by now that we have recorded, by now that we have recorded two cases, it would have been so common, mm. everybody would have known how to protect himself. The, the president went to the airport and he says he was satisfied with the measures we had put in place. Of course, I'm sure based on technical advice from the Ghana Health Service or Ministry of Health. So why do you choose to fault the president when he's been told by health officials what's in place and he says he's satisfied Even with it? Even there, the president has no business doing what he did that day. He's the president. That day, the president should have been in self-quarantine. You've forgotten the, 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 the statement I, I have referred you to. The statement says that anybody who arrives from that country, I'm told in Canada, the, the mm. president there, uh, or is it the wife, has contracted mm. that disease mm. because he, he went to UK and came back. I am saying that that day that the president was going about, he had no business doing that. He could have been a carrier and he could have not infected so many people. He should have been in self-quarantine. And so for me, I will tell this president <coughs> in his face, if he does wrong, if he does right, I will point it out. And so you are not going to calm me down that I am concentrating on uh, why he didn't uh, tell us that the money has come or whatever it is. I'm not interested in that. I would point to you what the president has done wrong. And any day, I will do that. Okay. So someone just sent uh, a couple of... Uh, George, thank you very much, lovely George. Uh, someone sent uh, a couple of, uh, what do you call it... Um, uh, jingles to me it says uh, you're talking about the coronavirus and other languages it sent me four different ones i found i can't listen to it, but so it shows clearly, that what, shows that it's it's out so, there so clearly what i said is truthful what i said is factual secondly um, well, I've, not, I've not invited you to speak yeah, I, I, no, no, I, i've not invited you i'm just saying i just that, wanted to no, a couple okay. of i'm just saying i'm just saying that what, it's it's there but i want it to be spread that's okay. my point with um, the prominence and page 16 of the daily graphic says that provide basic hygiene facilities to fight COVID-19. The Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Kumabwaji, has appealed to religious leaders to provide hand washing and alcohol-based sanitizers. Uh, 
uh, facilities in their places of worship to prevent the spread of global pandemic, the coronavirus COVID-2019 said. Although Ghana has not recorded any confirmed case, well, now we have this recorded, so news. this is late news. But uh, coming from in another one, well, churches, mosques, ashram, public places, we are very communal as a people. I'm sure you've heard from the, the advertorials that you've listened to. How should we go about moving forward? I know you're not a health professional, but we make some match with people. I am conscious these days not to shake hands. Of course. And yesterday, I met a big man who says, oh, she have been saying now that we will be, you know, so wait, shake my hands. If you die, you will die. Well, you see, I, I, I think we must also commend the vice president who over the last couple of days has publicly taken the lead in, 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 in ensuring that this elbow... I, I saw that from Mike yes. Pence as well. Yeah, this Actually, elbow greeting, this elbow who? greeting is... is, is vice president system. Mike Pence. Uh, he wants to I think appropriate that, that to be the that of the no, vice president. No, allow, allow, please, allow. So I, I'm saying that I saw that from Vice President Mike Pence, who is leading the the U.S. Uh, campaign in Ghana. I've not seen one figure, and I, I I wish that the vice president, since he started, and now everybody is greeting. No, he was trying to say also. the vice president started it. Please, uh, please, as yeah, usual, I'm not being invited. No, no, the make, extent of the pettiness. No, no, is make progress. But the facts are that. The, vi the vice president of this country has started that, that, that entire campaign. And I see that it's done very well. I was even, he should have, uh, Amalaba should have waited a little bit because I've seen a very beautiful picture this morning okay. of Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Dubam yeah, and the former president John Dramani Mahama mm. engaging in that greeting. Okay. I think that that is beautiful. I think that sends the right signal. And we need to encourage more of that than the partisanship that, that uh, Honorable Let's Mr. Amalaba is, is, Public is, 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 trying to, is trying to put out here. But listen, this is again i mm. cannot repeat this enough a mm. global pandemic each and every one of us must do our bit in whichever corner it is that we find ourselves in okay. to ensure that we protect ourselves and not only ourselves mm. but the people around us so whatever must be done if it is churches whatever must be done in every other public place our workplaces at the ministry of energy if you come there immediately you enter into the reception We've installed uh, my, the these little things okay. with hand sanitizers, so that at least every corridor at the end and in the middle is there. Yesterday we had a meeting on it. We had to ensure that look, there's running water all the so time. So everybody needs to get it, really. Every so church. Really, we are doing every our mosque, bit. Every every ashram. We are doing our bit mm -hmm. at the Ministry of, of, of Energy, and I'll encourage everybody, everybody who is in charge or who can take action at any public place, mm -hmm. at the taxi stations, at the taxi runs. What can they do? Are they going to fix a water hose to a pipe and mm. have? I don't know, but whatever it is that the local infrastructure allows, mm. let us all get together and rally to protect ourselves. Community action. This is all we have. Okay. Ghana is all we have. And I think that we need to reiterate that call. That let's take out the partisanship, let's take out the attempts to blame people and rally everybody to try and get the job done. Okay. Let's take it that we're at war. Mm. We're at war against the coronavirus. Public education is ongoing. I am doing my bit. I have hand sanitizers in my car. I carry them in my pocket. They are in my office. In fact, anybody I have that comes, in my pocket. anybody that comes to my office, I, at least I, I would um, mm. ask you to do that. No more handshakes. We do either the elbow mm. or the leg greeting. Let's all do that. I have my Let's all do that. And I challenge Honorable Amaleba to also, you know, repeat these things and let us all move together as okay. well. I have my hand sanitizer here, by the way, and uh, Council. Step in for me, public places, we're wrapping up. What, what should um, uh, we be doing? I see the emphasis on churches, but I think uh, the mosque. Yeah, church, ashrams as well. Yeah, the church and must also be a place. But you see the Muslims. Stadiums. Are, stadiums. But the mosque seems to have, uh, the Muslims, they are a bit ahead, at least. In performing the abolition, mm. they wash their hands. But is it effective? But I've been is that the kind of washing that right. we are asking for? I've been for? told that if you wash your hands with just water, you may be uh, emboldening yeah. the virus because yeah. they thrive in most of them okay. in water. So we need to send the message not only to the churches, but to these places as well. All religious centers where people congregate. You've indicated the, 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 the sports stadium. Mm. In some countries, they've even banned uh, some Ma matches. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, probably we may be looking at that. And we may also be interested in considering the PPP suggestion that the EC should not rule out this new register because <laughs> the, new register, the new register is going to make people congregate at the place. And I think that uh, we need to give 
much, much consideration. Had to come in. The, yes. Should we ban flights coming from countries? I'm told some countries have banned flights. I'm told some countries have banned flights from certain mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. So if, if that airport. is uh, the way to go, we need to do it to protect the citizenry. Because I'm told that thing spreads very quickly. I'm told that it can stay airborne. Eh? Mm. It defies uh, what's the gravity? The law of gravity. The law of gravity. It can stay for up to three hours. So now that I'm here, if like uh, he has, not me, then <laughs> he speaks. It can stay till the next uh, uh, guest person comes. Guest comes. Abuchi. So <laughs> no, no, I'm not. <laughs> But, but I, the, the Ghana House Service told me um, at, a, at a media encounter and other journalists that we're considering banning, um, you know, flights from places that have recorded cases. Yeah, well, that, that for me is a very difficult thing because you see these flights, hmm. it's very difficult to tell. I may not be on a flight that's coming from China, right. but I may be coming from Dubai. But you have done. You may have done a transit and, and, in the country. So it's very difficult to. to I, 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 it's, it's, I, I, I think that it will, it will come down to nothing, because if I'm coming, for example, from Turkey, and I decide to do a transit through Dubai, mm. my flight is coming from Dubai, mm. but I'm coming from Turkey, and if I'm if I have it, I have it. You can't do anything about that. No, but it will minimize. It will minimize. If, if we're able to regulate it. Yeah, it will minimize. Uh, all that we are doing now is to try to minimize the situation. Hmm. So for we example, are not talking about for example in, in America, in the entire United States of America, mm -hmm. Washington, D.C. now has a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. New York, relatively, I'm, 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 I'm yet to hear quite mm -hmm. a lot of these cases. Mm -hmm. But if I move from Washington, yeah. so does that mean, therefore, that we're going to ban all flights coming from America? Hmm. Even if the flight is coming from New York. And if you're allowing flights coming in from New York, and I have moved from Washington to pick my flight hmm. to New York to make it a direct flight to Ghana, then what's the point? Okay, so I'm reading uh, page 16 of the Daily Graphic. It says, um, this was in a speech read on behalf of the, uh, what do you call it, the Director General of the Ghana House Service, Dr. Patrick Kumar Bwaji, to the faith-based organizations and civil society organizations uh, in a meeting. They had a crunch meeting. And it says that, Dr. Waji said the use of alcohol rubs should be done periodically throughout church services while members avoid handshaking as much as possible. He also appealed to them to adhere to some national and global preventative directives such as reducing the number of congregants at any given time by organizing multiple services where, where possible to help curtail overcrowding which has been identified as an effective conduit for the spread of the disease supported uh, by the UN and all of that and I've seen the Catholic Bishop Conference and the internal province of Ghana <coughs> also issue uh, notices that for example uh, the communion should be done by intention for example in the Anglican Church and then the handshakes and keys of peace uh, should be avoided as much as possible we use it we need it I mean in our churches and our mosques in our schools I particularly have appealed that PTAs should meet now and ensure that we have Veronica buckets and hand sanitizers for the children because they are the most vulnerable, as mm. we've been told. I mean, their immune system may not be as sharp as, you know, that of adults. So we, it's, a, it's a war, like uh, Nana has said and many of us have agreed. We're going to war. Protect yourself. Get on your full armor. Antena, welcome. Yeah, thank you, Johnny. A few messages this morning, I think, uh, but uh, a lot of people are talking about the coronavirus. That's, that's what Good all we've been morning, talking about. Good morning, Johnny. This coronavirus thing is a big threat to the whole world. I'd like to suggest to government that instead of bringing us together in the name of a new voters registration uh -huh. and putting us under high risk, they should rather divert over 400, the over 400 million earmarked for the exercise to fighting this deadly COVID-19. My name is Ambrose from Mamobi. This one says, uh, the moment this 100 million was announced a day before yesterday for the coronavirus campaign, I knew definitely it will come to Ghana that soonest because this money must be chopped at all means. <laughs> but if it's the truth, too, may God forgive our iniquities and save us. This one is from Swoba Ia Attack from Kaswa. I appeal to the media, especially radio and television, to engage the health professionals in any interview about this coronavirus as the foreign media are doing than to call NDC people to do politics with it. We are, in a, we are in serious times, therefore it is not the time to do politics with deadly disease like this. So for 
four more for Nana. This one says, good morning, New Day. Please, the fact must be told, we, the health professionals, especially at the northern part of the country, have not been given any case management training mm -hmm. on this COVID-19 infectious disease. Tell our politicians to stop the talk and do the rightful things by providing us with the uh, PPE and training for the management. Tell the government to personal... Uh, gov tell uh, that government personnel to stop the defending the talk and let him tell government to provide us with PPs to work. Uh, this one is from Securities from Paga. This one says, Eben from Kwabenya, Welder Junction. I'm very, very sad and it's very unfortunate. COVID-19 doesn't know anything party, uh, be it NDC or MPP. I'm really disappointed in the leadership of this country. Their uh, lackadaisical attitude have caused us, some of us, won't forgive them. Shame on them. Williams from Kufuridia. If there are any useful uh, lessons that the coronavirus has uh, brought, it, it has shown how interconnected the world has become. It has demonstrated how a virus in a neck of woods town like uh, Hubei in China, China can uh, have a butterfly effect on transportation, football, and the economy of the world. COVID-19 is a uh, leveler. It shows no discrimination towards the rich nor poor countries, black or white. This is the time for the world and humanity to show a little milk of human kindness towards one another. This one says, I like your discussion today. Good work done, Oliver, inside a plow. Good morning, TV3. This COVID-19 has surfaced at the time that almost all health facilities are facing serious financial crisis due to non-payment of NHIS. How will these facilities procure logistics to prepare well to fight this pandemic? Dr. Ikum Boko. Whether Ghana is ready or not, now we have two cases of the deadly disease coronavirus, aka COVID-19. The question is, how are we going to prevent them from spreading it? Uh, are the quarantine and the isolation centers ready for anybody who might come across the COVID-19. Ghanaians should be afraid. We just have to stay clean, wash our hands frequently, and uh, boost, boost our immune system. President Kufado is doing everything possible to make Ghanaians free from coronavirus, aka COVID-19. This one says, good morning, New Day. Please, why are our borders still open? Where are the other passengers in the plane? This one says, my suspicion is that the speech of the president was a ruse to undercut the announcement of the presence of the coronavirus in his characteristic showman fashion. Uh, this is Koshi from uh, Denu. This one says, good morning, Johnny and your panelists. We thank the president for announcing a package of 500 million cities for the preparedness. It wasn't 500 million. Oh, the coronavirus. Yeah, but that's, that's it the is equivalent. equivalent. Oh, okay, okay. But it is my belief that this money will be really channeled into the readiness of what it is meant for and not a means of diverting part into campaign preparedness because posterity will, uh, forgive, will not forgive any officer who thinks of massaging this allocation of CD equivalent of $100 million. Nuku from Home Municipality. This one is from Fusein Izongo. It is good that... Our Ministry of Health is allaying fears of Ghanaians with regard to this coronavirus. And I hope the plans put in place are enough to protect the citizens from contracting the disease. For more for Nana, uh, this one is from Fosseini. Good morning, Johnny. I think it's time for us to put our differences, NDC and PP aside, and fight this virus collectively. The NDC man should stop blaming government and accusing Nanado. We can't save uh, the situation if people are always talking like the NDC. I don't like the blame game at all. This is uh, hashtag Nana Ewuku from Ashoma. Let me take the last one. This one, uh, Nyoja Bright in Sunyane. The president and his government all of a sudden got $100 million to release when they could only give 2.5 million cities or the required 35 billion cities. And the next day, we record cases. I think he had full knowledge before making this pledge. He thought he, it was a joke that there was a disease called coronavirus. A lot of messages, but that's where we end it. This thank morning. you very much. And uh, thank you to my uh, panelists. And I, a question I'm asking in my mind at this point is that the two cases were recorded. They came from uh, Italy, uh, no, uh, Norway, Turkey. Norway and Turkey. Did our protective, or if you like, uh, our vigilance at the airport fail? That's what I'm thinking at this point. Well, I Did think that's too early. It's too early those to on the those plane with them... Uh, what has happened to them, you know, I, I'm just thinking... But you see, I'm just thinking with all the, the, the facilities put in place, mm -hmm. 
these two cases were actually put to test our resolve. We have been saying that, then the president, you indicated to me, the president indicated that, mm. oh, uh, he's satisfied with the facilities put in place. These two cases would actually test the system. Mm. And one of the failures is what you've just said. What happened when they arrived at the airport? Were we able to detect it at that point? Mm. Or they slipped in before, let's, let's, before let's, we were able to let's, know? Let's be factual okay. with ourselves. Mm. Let's be factual with ourselves that the virus can stay within you for two to four right, days it can. without showing uh -huh. any symptoms. Now, the That's next why thing the thing president I want should have done self-quarantine. Okay. Okay. The next thing I want to say... When the president just came just back 14 days, he should have quarantined. All DCs and MMDAs should activate their emergency protocols now. It's very important. The chip, the chip compounds, I'm worried about the chip compounds. Because they have stopped. Do they have the capacity... No, 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 to no, use no. the chip compounds no, no, if no, it's detected no. sometime. Because it I know is, uh, suspected cases in uh, Doma and Brico, at least the fact for that, example. At least the fact that we're able to identify suspected cases in those areas tells of a certain level of preparedness. Okay. But I think that we should all ramp it up and ensure every... The Bank of Ghana hospital should be opened. Okay, thank you. Yeah, very other much. Lawyer Abraham Malaba is uh, uh, with the fight, NDC, the lead them, counsel yeah, for the NDC. He's been here on the ticket of his party. <laughs> and also Nana Kofi Opong Damwa speaks for the energy <laughs> ministry hopefully by next week a few prices would go down but as i said they earlier stay safe will. wash your hands regularly with soap and under running water and use your hand sanitizers and avoid handshakes avoid uh, large congregations and stay safe drink a lot of water keep hydrated and Here keep clean and safe uh, yeah yeah. And then avoid the new voter register. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you after the break. Don't mind about it, but we'll see you after the break. <laughs>